Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to all the incredible things we have right here in the Lone Star State. You know, it's easy to say that the heroes of Texas are larger than life. The legendary lore of Sam Houston, William Barrett Travis, and Davy Crockett are talked about every single day here. But you can't forget about Stephen F. Austin, the father of Texas, who's definitely larger than life and hard to miss when you head down to Brazoria County. No matter what corner of the Lone Star State you find yourself in, you'll always be right around the corner from some incredible Texas history. Brazoria County is no exception. It was here that Cabeza de Vaca landed in 1528, and 300 years later, Stephen F. Austin was establishing a colony in these parts. But to hear more of this amazing story, just look for the sizable statue of one of the heroes of Texas. I do have people that come down here from Nacogdoches, and they're amazed when they see the statue and they pull over and they have to get a picture. And they always tell me, we're coming back with all of our school gear so we can take a picture. We didn't know that we had a statue too. James Glover is the historic site manager here. And trust me, we wondered if he was a time traveler from the past. My boss tells me that uh, I was dug up from an 1835 time capsule. You got a lot of history in your head. A little bit. <laughs> There's no DeLoreans in 1835, right? Well, only the one. Just the one. But he left. James is a walking encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to the incredible history of Brazoria County. And here, it's all about Austin and his colony. Of course, we've got a giant statue of the father of Texas out front, so we kind of have to focus on him. So I decided our focus on this site is pretty much what the original brainstormers for the site had thought of. The era that influenced what Austin did here and how far his influence actually carried. The statue of Stephen F. Austin was built by famous Texas artist David Attucks, who, yes, also constructed the massive Sam Houston statue you can find in Huntsville. How does he compare to the Sam Houston statue in uh, Huntsville? According to the sculpture, four feet taller. I haven't gone out and measured the two, but I'll take Mr. Attucks' word for it since he built both of them. While his statue may be a bit bigger, in James's eyes, Stephen F. Austin had a much bigger role in making Texas what it is today. I would say, although I am a bit biased, infinitely more important. <laughs> <laughs> this guy set up a successful colony in Mexican Texas. Prior to that, he set up a colony in Arkansas. Really? Yeah, he really did. He actually set up a town called uh, Little Rock. <laughs> I think I've heard of that one. Yeah, I've heard of it once. I don't, know, through there. I don't know much of foreign lands, but I think I know of that one. Austin was instrumental in settling Texas, and that all started in 1821. This map is about as good of a representation of Austin's colony as you're going to get. This is actually a tracing done in the 1890s because the original got so bad it's illegible. Okay. But this one, if your family was in Austin's original colony, they're on this map. And if you can find the meets and bounds of where they were at, you can pretty well determine what section of it to look on, but once you get an area pinpointed and come in, you can actually find their name on this map if they were here. He came in, took an area that didn't have anything, nothing here, and turned it into the most successful financial as well as tranquil community or, or area of Texas. This was the garden basket, the richest area in Texas because he wouldn't let anybody come in who didn't have an occupation, who couldn't make a living, who couldn't contribute back to the community. Do you know everything about all 297 like people? There's a couple I don't know yet. Really? That's hard to imagine. All told, it is said that uh, Austin settled about 6,000 individuals in Texas before he died. If I'm ever on a game show where I have to answer a Texas historical question about mm. Austin's colony, yeah, I'm calling you. The history of Texas centers around Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston. Two men with massive statues that might have had a bit of a rift once Texas won its independence. Two guys who really were not fans of each other. That's um, exaggerated. J.P. Bryan is actually related to Stephen F. Austin, and he has an incredible collection of Austin's paperwork at the Bryan Museum in Galveston. They were for two men who were ambitious, wanted to have as much control as possible over events of the time, politically. They were certainly not um, enemies. They had periods of time uh, where they were very compatible, shared 
sentiments about the same thing. That shared sentiment set the stage for the reason we call Stephen F. Austin the father of Texas. We have a whole host of other people who are very, very important, but those two are the most well-known. So how come Stephen F. Austin got the title father of Texas? Well, do you think he liked the title? Do you think he was fond of it? Actually, he never heard it. Two days after Austin's death, on the 27th of December, Sam Houston wrote a eulogy and had it published in the Telegraph and Texas Register at the town of Columbia. And in it, he says, the father of Texas has passed. That was the first time he was called the father of Texas. So head down to Brazoria County to see the father of Texas overlooking the lands of the Lone Star State and toast to his Texas-sized accomplishment of making Texas, well, Texas. It does represent the father of Texas and the guy who set up the first successful Anglo colony in Mexican Texas of the time and actually has some very important sites for what later became the Republic of Texas and ultimately the state that we now enjoy. And I get to meet me. <laughs> <laughs>